No, Rory and Ma. All right, Rory. So as we uh further celebrate 50 years of hip hop, yes, it's important that uh we highlight and talk to individuals who have done a lot for the ecosystem and the culture of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, today we are joined by the legendary, iconic, mm. uh, DJ, uh, producer, executive, uh, fashion icon, yes. sneaker god, sneaker connoisseur. Uh, in my very humble opinion, and family, uh, DJ Clark Kent. Hey, it's an honor to be here. How you feeling, man? I feel blessed. I feel uh, like I said, honored because you know you could be speaking to anyone, but you guys choose to speak to me and there's other people that can be spoken to. So it's an honor. Well, you're, you're one of the people that, uh, growing up as a fan of hip hop and just everything that hip hop gave to the community, you were one of the, the figures that if anybody loved hip hop and followed hip hop and studied hip hop, you were one of the ones that we looked to. So, um, it's funny how life works. Uh, years later now, your family, yeah. Uh, my family is your family. Your For family sure. is my family. Um, so it's a it's a privilege and it's special. This is a special one for me to sit here and kick it with you about just the culture and to hear from you over the years what hip hop means and what it has given the world. Cool. Well, let's do it. But before we start, I'd like to say that I'm very proud of both of y'all. I Thank you. Man. I appreciate it. Because I've definitely known y'all for a good long time. Absolutely. And I've seen it. Yeah, bro, absolutely, and uh, it's it's awesome, and I'm Thank very you. proud of y'all. And I uh, I appreciate the fact that uh you don't make our craft and our our world look stupid, right? You know, that's very important. Very, very important. Right. I'm, I'm, Trust, thank you for saying. Yeah, that actually, yeah, means, a lot. You. I, I appreciate that means a lot. Thank especially you. with podcasting now. It's, yeah, it's kind of getting a little out of control. With yeah, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. making not, things not look not a little weird. Way. I mean, it's 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 what happens with everything. Like all of a sudden, everybody was MCs and everybody's mm-hmm. DJs and everybody's producers. Yeah, you know. So with things that become popular, I expect it the to happen. Suffers, yeah. But I I appreciate the fact that you guys um you have some integrity about it. Absolutely. You know? yeah. And you matter to our culture. Absolutely. Thank you for that. No, I really appreciate that. Um, so I want to start from the beginning. Um, when you first, when did you know that hip hop was something that was important to you, was something that you wanted to be a part of, was something that you wanted to add to, was something that you wanted to uh, deliver to the culture and to the world? When did you know, like, this is what I am, this is what I want to do? Um, if I had to pinpoint something, it would probably be about 1978 when I realized that it was a thing, mm-hmm. you know, I, w- I started DJing in 1975. I know mm. it sounds weird, but that's when I learned how to DJ in 75. By 77, I played in a park jam. Mm. So by 78, I realized that the way we played started to change. Mm-hmm. You know, 75, you're mixing records. 76, you're mixing records. 77, you're mixing. But then all of a sudden, the parts of the record that you're mixing become different. And what you see is breaks and the breaks started to become more important. And that meant you had to mix faster. Or you, mm-hmm. And then later on, scratching started. And when that happened, you realize, oh, no, this is different than just the records that we were playing back in the days when we were playing disco, mm-hmm. you know. And um, when that happened and you started seeing that there were ev- events, when I say events, I mean parties, block parties, um, clubs that would only house that type or that style of playing Mm -hmm. you realize that this thing belongs to itself Mm -hmm. and then it had its own form of dance the art became a part of it and the way we dressed and the way that we carried ourselves and the 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 mc becoming something that thing all belonged to a thing that was becoming a culture Mm -hmm. like like you got to watch it happen Mm -hmm. but in in real time by 70 Seven seventy eight. I'm like, oh no, I'm I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. Do you think around seventy eight, seventy nine is when the breakbeats took over the entire length of the party? Well, I don't think it ever took over the entire length of the party. I think that when the rappers became as important, mm-hmm. that's what they were rapping to. Gotcha. Um, you know, records being breaks being extended by DJs, but um, the parties themselves. That's like the early 70s. Mm-hmm. And uh, the feeling of the party switching started happening in the early 70s. But when the whole thing like came together, I would say like by 77, it mm-hmm. really came together, 76. But everything, 
was already all the way there by like 78. When did you feel like this is something that's going to stay? This isn't just this year. Um, when I when I looked around at the landscape and figured out who it was that was actually doing it. Like, um, it was, we were young. You know what I'm saying? I was super young, but the, the leaders in it were young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, 19, mm-hmm. you know, 20, like, and you're the forefront of this thing. Like, when you start with the youth like that, and then it's a bunch of youth behind them, pause, um, they're learning from that and that's their learning. So that's what they're going to keep growing up into. Mm -hmm. So cultures, when they start like that, the youth Mm -hmm. are the reason why it keeps going, you know? So because it was young, I I believed and knew it was going to keep going. I didn't, I wasn't one of those guys who let his mom tell him, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a fad or, Mm -hmm. or that music is, is chicken boom, boom, scratch music. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't let that happen to me. It's interesting that you say that because I, I always say on the show, um, I remember uh, having to sneak to listen to Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. And so I try not to, you know, when they talk about the newer generation and the content and things that they're saying, I try not to go on that side of, yeah, that's garbage. I don't want to listen to that because at one point, that's what was being told to me about right. what are now legends For sure. of the culture. How do you feel the game has progressed? Um, and what are some things that you sit back and say, I wish that didn't happen, but I understand why that happened in the culture? Well, I understand why the talent level of rappers isn't where it used to be. Mm-hmm. When rap first started, it was like a contact sport. Mm-hmm. And you to be noticed, you really had to be really good. Yeah. You had to do something that made you special. As soon as money came into the game, it was, let's get as many rappers as we can to sell as many records as Mm. we can. It became entertainment more than it became the sport. Mm -hmm. So once that switched over, once the money came in, money took rap away, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And separated it from the whole culture. Mm -hmm. So we look at rap like it's the music that lives within the culture of hip hop. Mm -hmm. The record company looks at rap like, oh, this is entertainment. We're going to make as much money as we can and get as many rappers as we can. And then you start to lose the talent level because you're just signing something to get market share. Mm -hmm. What do you think that shift happened as far as the business coming into hip hop? Uh, 86, Mm. 85, 86. It started out right. You know what I'm saying? Sugar Hill started out, you know, they they were the first rap records. Yeah, the deals might have been bad, but they were the catalyst for things that could be great. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then as soon as Rakim came and showed you that the talent level is on another level, mm-hmm. that's when it, I feel like the money became something else to the record companies. Like, oh no, let's go get more mm-hmm. to get and build in KRS and the mm-hmm. people who really shifted the the pen game mm-hmm. in the music business. You know what I'm saying? Like the Canes. As soon as that happened, it was like, oh, free for all. And do you think that just came with the music or... Could that be attached to, say, Adidas in 86 well, with Run DMC and seeing not only can we sell music, they have the influence to also move product for us. They are the tastemakers. Well, I wouldn't necessarily just blame it on rap. I, I blame it on black folks. Black mm-hmm. folks are the catalyst to sell damn near everything. Mm-hmm. And everything that we think is cool becomes sold on a different level. Mm-hmm. You know, so... That's a that's a black people thing. <laughs> I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, what would you What would you consider the first sneaker to be associated with the hip hop culture? I think all sneakers were associated with hip hop because everybody wears sneakers. Mm. I don't single out hip hop and go, "That's why it's so important." I I single out basketball. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I single out in New York City. To me, the reason I fell in love with sneakers was Clyde Frazier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a New York Knicks fan. He gave us a championship. 
he wore a sneaker with his name on the side of it in gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. We wanted his sneakers. Yeah. We wore Pro-Care Royals because Tiny Nate Archibald wore them. Mm -hmm. We wore the sneakers we wore because of the basketball players who won. We wore Dr. J's because he was Dr. J. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When Jordan came along, we wore Jordans because of Jordan. We didn't wear Jordan because they were like the freshest sneakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they became the freshest sneakers because it motivated us more, but we wore Air Force Ones because of Moses Malone and they were the freshest sneakers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Chuck Taylor's, you know, yeah. basketball was all Chuck Taylor's when we were kids. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you feel like some of the basketball players though were trying to dress like the rappers? I mean, and we know the rappers are trying to dress like the drug dealers, but I think maybe that's later on in time, but mm -hmm. like in the beginning, like Clive Fraser dressed like a pimp. Yeah. I mean, he still does. Yeah. <laughs> but but he's from a pimp town. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's the way they dressed when he came here. He was driving a Rolls Royce. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it he was like a superhero. And all of the big drug dealers at that time, the 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 the, the what's his name? The all of the guys, the, the Franks, the Pee Wees, all of them, they dressed like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what he did was from his neighborhood, but it also translated to the guys who were getting money in our neighborhoods, you know? Yeah. So they look the same. Mm. How do you feel now? Because, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I see people on your Instagram, the younger generation, and uh, they know you more for your sneakers than they do for your actual DJing. And, I'm, and I laugh and I'm like... Oh, y'all don't know Clark Kent. Like y'all, y'all see him in these magazines and these these mm -hmm. these photo shoots with all these sneakers. Y'all think this is what he does? Nah, it goes back further than this. Yeah. Like Jay Z, Biggie, yeah. you know, right. artists, artists, and figures that are larger than life to our culture. Mm -hmm. Talk about your role in that, and in, in that element of which I look at as game changing for hip hop with artists like Big and Jay. Um. I think um, everybody has the ability to see greatness. I just think that some people are supposed to see the greatness. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I believe talent begets talent. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a talented DJ, I should be able to see what a talented DJ is. I should be able to see what a talented rapper is, a talented singer. If I'm musical, talent. if right. I'm talented musically, I should be able to go, oh, that rapper's a good rapper or, oh, this singer's a good singer. That producer is a good producer. And I've been studying music and paying attention to music since I can remember living. Mm -hmm. So being able to see the talent in someone like a Jay-Z or even like a Big is because I... I heard Grandmaster Cat. Right. And I was like, he's the, the best MC I ever heard at that time. Mm -hmm. So to me, he's the first best MC I ever heard. And then I hear Rakim and he's the most important MC I've ever heard. And then I hear Jazzo. I hear Jay-Z. I hear Sauce Money. I hear Biggie. I hear Kane. I hear Coogee Rap. I hear Craig G. I hear Kane, like Kane, dog. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I hear these MCs all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going... Yeah, those are the rhymes. Those are the rhymes. Those are the, you heard what he said. You heard what he, how tricky. You, you see how clever. That's what. I, that's all I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing it from contact, sport, time. Like KRS One. The first time I heard KRS One, I was like, rappers are in trouble mm -hmm. because he he rhymed from the contact sport mm -hmm. place. You know what I'm saying? And all of these guys I just named all rhyme from the contact sport place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So being able to see and and pick and pay attention is because of Grandmaster Cats. Like when I was young, I never wanted to be a rapper, but I always looked at the rappers and was like, if I ever wanted to be a rapper, at back at that time, I wanted to be as good as Cats. Mm -hmm. okay. Cause he was destructive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think anybody could be Cats. And then you hear Kumo D and Busy B battle and you're like, oh God damn, that's another level. Mm -hmm. And then LL Cool J and you're like, that's another level. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, Rakim, he changed everything. Right. He's the most important MC I've ever heard I believe that. Was, yeah. was Rakim because then everybody stopped rapping and started rhyming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? So even the tone. Right. Because yeah. he gave tone. Because yeah. he was like, I don't have to rap at y'all. I'm going to rhyme at y'all. Mm -hmm. And then everybody was like, oh, we could rhyme. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to animate too much. I just have to get my, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But you can't get your point across unless you're saying something amazing. 
he was saying something amazing right. that he didn't have to yell it at you. He didn't have to tip, tip, pad, tip, tip. Yeah. He was like, I came in the door. Like the way he mm-hmm. said it made him that special. And I'm right there when it's happening. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in front of it. I'm like, oh, nah, he's crazy. Yeah. You yeah. Know? What, what was the environment like in, the, in Brooklyn in the early 90s when you had Jay, Big, Busta, ODB, even most coming up? where everyone hadn't really quite made it yet. Of course, mm-hmm. Buzz would lead a new school, but did everyone kind of know that these four to five young kids in Brooklyn are going to take this to the next level? Was that an obvious thing? Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. but think, was that the, the actual thought? I think the most obvious was, was big. Mm-hmm. And then right, but let me say this. The most obvious, the, way, the reason why I say the most obvious in Brooklyn was big was because that was easy to get as soon as you heard it. Like, you know, we had Kane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We had one of the greatest already. We had Kane. And then when you heard Big, you were like, God damn, like that's that's something else. But like I heard and was and was running around going, Jay's the guy. Jay's the guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And people are going, eh, I don't get it. And, you know, but I'm just like, obviously, you're not listening to the bars because mm. if you listen to the bars, you'll you understand. Get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the but thing is, Biggie made the bars easier to listen to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, it was automatic when you heard Biggie. He was like, oh, we're going to love this guy. And then you had to get convinced on Jay because when Jay, when you first heard Jay, you was like, this is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like it, all of the things you're saying are unbelievable. And then you go see it and then you're like. Oh shit, he really did all of that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like everything he's talking about, he really did. Mm-hmm. You know? So it was different. But the I think the the one that people across the board, as soon as they heard it, they were like, oh yeah, mm. was big. I think- mean, we all knew Buster had a, a an incredible amount of talent when he was with um Lisa of the New School. And then when he went solo, to me, that was like, I yeah, I hear that. I mm. get it. I think everybody saw that too. Yeah. Just seeing Leaders of the New School, if yeah. you see them visually, the videos. Buster was the energy, the yeah. animation. Yeah, Buster is is a special, oh, special absolutely. talent. Like absolutely. he's he's so gifted talent wise that people miss how good he is lyrically. Yeah, like he's a beast with mm-hmm. a pen, mm-hmm. but he has so much to him mm-hmm. that you you don't even get. Yeah. Like 75 to 80 percent of what he's saying. And like he's going crazy in his raps. Mm -hmm. Like he rap, rap, raps, Mm -hmm. you know, if you had to choose um, between the two, between Big and Jay. Right. And I think I saw you talk about this on the show before. And I asked enough this question. I don't think that Biggie gets. The credit as an MC as oh, much nah, nah, he that, does. He, that he yeah, deserves. He, yes, he does. I don't think to me. I, I to think me. he's a better MC than people give him credit for. Me personally. Well, I've I've said on a number of occasions. I think Jay's the best MC and Biggie's the second best MC. But mm-hmm. I think Big is the best rapper and Jay's the second best rapper. So they're one and two on both of those lists right. to me. You know. Mm. You so think, I think I I think people know what time it is with Big. You do? Yeah. Because I see I, people talking. Who says that though? That I've, I've never heard MC. I'm that Big is just a rapper, not an MC. I've never heard that. To me, people mm. don't give Biggie the credit as an MC that he deserves. I'm sorry. I, I hear them name people before him, and I'm like, no. I would say that more towards Jay. I feel like Jay doesn't get his props for his actual MC. I could see that. Than, than Big. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I think people will still say Hove is the GOAT and not realize that he could go neck and neck with any of the lyricists you could name. Mm-hmm. I don't think he gets his credit in that lane. But wow. do, you think, do you think Big... And Jay, in that era, kind of started mainstream versus underground. I was having a conversation with Ninth, and he said the divide that he thought was stakes is high and it was written. People went to it was written, and they stayed more towards Hove, Big, Bad Boy. And if you did stakes is high when you started to get to Dilla and Slum Village and Mose and Kwali, like, do you think that split happened I, I believe, in Brooklyn at that time? Nah, I think... You know, big happened and then Jay happened and they were just like, we got the greatest, mm. mm-hmm. you know, I mean, a, a lot of people will say I'm biased, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm from Brooklyn, mm-hmm. but we also had Kane. Yeah. Right. And I'm sorry. The only one we didn't have was Rakim. Mm-hmm. Karis one is born in Brooklyn. Nas <laughs> is born in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. 
I guess. Mm. <laughs> I'm saying, how much Brooklyn do you need? Michael Jordan is born in Brooklyn. Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. Stays for like a minute. Mike Tyson. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, so it might seem a little biased, but I'm saying if, I, if we didn't have the, we had the two greatest MCs yeah. ever to me. Uh, to most. To me. I just want no, I that to be clear. I, I, I want the audience I, I, to be no, I clear. But I'm going to say to, to most me. people, I think they would say the same. Okay. I, I mean, I can make a case for Queens in a versus against Brooklyn. No, hey, look. I think Kooji I could. Rap, who mm -hmm. is a demon. Absolutely. Nas is a demon. LL Cool J is a demon. Mm -hmm. Like, those three alone mm. is, a, is a serious argument in rap. 50 and Nicki? We, so as far artists, so far as, artists, artists yeah. as artists, absolutely. Um, we talk about this. this as artists, hold on. Right. Artists. What about rappers? As rappers, yes. Okay. But as MCs, we, I was just talking MCs. We just talking, you know, I said Kane. Mm. I said Kooji Rap. Oh, oh sorry. I'm say, I said Kooji Rap. I said L.O. Cool J. And I said um, Nas. Yeah. Those are MCs. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 50's uh, a super artist. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And super. Nicky's a super artist. At one point in his career, I think 50 was an MC. And then I, I'm not, I'm not saying drifted away. Rap. I'm just saying, like, it, what did you pay more attention to when it came to 50? You paid attention to the whole yeah. thing. You didn't pay attention to the raps as much. What was the last classic hip hop album, in your opinion? <laughs> Push's last album. Mm. Push his last two albums. Mm. Daytona Dirty. and Before It's Dry. Dirty. Mm. That's interesting. Dirty. I was not expecting you to say that. I Shit. think Daytona is definitely a classic. I got to give Before It's Dry a little bit more time. It's almost dry. I'm sorry. That's cool. Um, I do love that album. I just want right. to give it some more time. But Daytona to me, yes, is definitely a classic. Wow. I, that, Clark, I was not expecting you to say well, that. Well, I... I my criteria is way different. Absolutely, than most people's yeah, like absolutely. if I can skip a song, I can remove it. Yeah, from from the, mm -hmm. the record. Wow, I can remove it from that. Daytona was hard though. Daytona was fire. Daytona was great. That was a great. I mean, album. a written testimony is fire. Mm. I agree. Like fire. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's one people need to go back and <laughs> and listen, listen to before they come to a conclusion. Right. Speaking of uh, push it. Seeing he's one of the greatest. Oh, absolutely. Seeing the levels that uh Pharrell and Kanye have taken fashion mm -hmm. coming from hip hop culture. How does that make someone like you that grew up with the culture when the culture started? You were there. Did you think that it was ever possible for people from our culture of hip hop to end up in those places as far as in the world of fashion? Absolutely. We had no choice. Because they were coming to get what we were doing anyway. Mm -hmm. So what, what makes you smarter? To keep going and stealing it or just saying, come, come bring it to us? Mm. Probably get it easier when you say, come bring it to us. And then you have the people that were already rocking with you, rock with you harder because they're going, man, they came and got us. Yeah. Who do you think started that? Who put their foot in the door for fashion first? Like on a real control level? not just maybe designing a one-off shoe for a brand, like really got hip hop, even if it's not a rapper, could be exec, that really started where we're at now with hip hop and fashion. I, I would probably say Carl Can I, mm, okay. because he made that everybody, again? he made it, yeah. He made I'm everybody. just keeping score. Well, we could keep yeah. it. April Walker, Carl, I would say April Walker and Carl Can I. Okay. Because they made everybody pay attention to what we were doing. Yeah. For those that don't know who that is, what is what was their backstory and what exactly? Abel Walker was Walker Wear mm -hmm. and Carl Kanai's Carl Kanai jeans. Yeah. And yeah. The iconic two, Carl yeah, Kanai jeans. Yeah, iconic, yes. And um, both of them from Brooklyn has nothing to do with nothing. But to me, they made everybody pay attention. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you brought them inside or not didn't matter. What matters is we're on your radar to the point where if they keep rocking the way they want, you guys are going to lose. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they did. Like, Hawk and I shut down Tommy Hilfiger for a while. Mm. Shut down Polo for a while. You shut down everything just being great. And Hawk and I shutting down Polo is 
that might need to be a documentary because sure. if you're from New York, you know exactly how big Polo was in the streets of New York. And I'm still a super duper Polo fan. Right. We need a low life documentary. Oh yeah, I mean, this <laughs> is it's one. a few on There's YouTube. One? Oh, I have to yeah, check it out. This, this, I've seen one on YouTube before. I think. Uh, I'm in a low Polo life. documentary. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sure, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's get more biased then, since we're on this topic. Which borough has dressed the best in the last fifty years of hip hop? Has dressed the best? Yeah. Because, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, we don't have that anymore where every borough dresses differently. Everybody dresses the same. Everyone dresses the same. Media now. But Everybody at one point, wears the same shit. everyone did dress differently depending on each borough. I'm going to say any borough that had hustlers. Because we all used to try to dress like the hustlers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You all wanted to dress like the guys who were getting money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I... I I lean more towards Brooklyn mm. because we were the borough that really went everywhere. You would see Brooklyn in the Bronx. You see mm -hmm. it in Manhattan. You see it in Queens. I can't say Bronx and Manhattan came to Brooklyn like that. Right. Yeah. Queens came to Brooklyn like that. But you would <laughs> see Brooklyn in everybody else's borough. Mm. So I would say Brooklyn. Okay. And not because I'm from Brooklyn. I would say Brooklyn and very closely behind it, Manhattan. Yeah, like extremely close. I'd probably go Harlem and then yeah, well, then Brooklyn. Harlem's not a borough. One A, one one. Manhattan's a borough, so I, so I, I mean, say Manhattan. Manhattan. But but I would say it was like this for the whole time because when Harlem was the shit, mm. like thirty five percent of what was going on in Harlem was Brooklyn people being in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Harlem. Mm -hmm. I mean, until I'm we, a rooftop vet. So we came with the G Unit wife beaters, and then we Queens took over the world. Nasty times, <laughs> very nasty. Queens has had some nasty fashion. <laughs> Yes. Like some nasty fashion. Like, yes. Like once we got rid of the Adidas suits, we just went rogue. We didn't know what to do after <laughs> We had that. no idea what we were wearing. Uh, That's a fact. <laughs> I, I can be not biased. Yeah. We, we look nuts for a while. But Kith, Ame, all queens, I think we've made a comeback. Yeah. Y'all have, y'all have, y'all have kind of closed the gap a little bit. It's, Absolutely. yeah. I, I agree with it's, that. It's a little better now. Um, Clark, what's your favorite sneak of all time? Why don't Air Force Ones? Uh, What's your favorite rap album of all time? Rap album of all time. It's probably a tie between like three. Okay. Four. Okay. Um, reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I think it's a classic, but I'm so a part of it. It it's holds a, something your DNA different is, here. Yeah, I get um, it. Ready to die and and um and life after death are like twins to me. Mm -hmm. Illmatic is crazy. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg's first album mm -hmm. is crazy, and America's Most Wanted. Mm. <sighs> Shit, straight out of Compton is crazy mm. to me too. You know what I'm saying? But mm. yeah, those. So it's like I think that's six, maybe seven, yeah, probably six or seven. I think they're all on the, the same level. Do you like, still produce? Oh yeah. Who do you? Who, <laughs> who would you out of the newer generation, the newer guys? Who would you want to produce an album for? If it was rap, rap, rap. Yeah. Uh, Lady London. Uh, Thug. Because he could rap. For he sure. Can. He could rap. No, he could definitely he rap. Um, Cole. You and Cole um, never, never worked together? Nah. We, we talk all the yeah. time. But it, it's more like a big brother, little brother situation. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a... I'm going to go run to go. It was just, I just have unbelievable amounts of respect for his talent. His yeah. talent is some other Insane. Thing. Conway. Mm. He's dirty. Um, Simba. He raps. Wow. Absolutely. One of my raps. favorite um, new rappers for sure. Uh, Pusha. Even though he's not new, but yeah. like, you know, we're, we're friends, but yeah. we haven't, but I, and I feel like I want to. Mm-hmm. Jada, I know he's mm -hmm. not, you know, mm -hmm. but Fab, mm -hmm. like guys who I think can really, really rap, mm -hmm. I'd love to make records with. Um, being a DJ producer, <clears throat> I feel like in the early days, they were a DJ first and then a producer. T.I. would be great. T.I. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you and T.I. would do some great shit. Um, I feel like starting out with the DJ producers, they were DJs first and then producers. I think now... The DJs are producers first, DJs second. When do you think that shift happened? 
like when, even from when mustard DJs are to getting paid real real a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When when DJs started getting paid really good money, I think producers were like, "Hold up, I can do that." Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's another revenue stream, especially when you look at. The big EDM DJs. Mm. The big EDM DJs are big EDM DJs because they make records. And then when you go to a show, they play their records. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like you're getting a performance without having a performer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why they go see those DJs and pay that kind of money for them. Um, so now I think like guys who do the music that we do, they're going... Oh, so you mean I can go just go play my songs and I can get paid? Oh, I'm going to do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I would love it if they really learned how to actually play. Mm -hmm. Then it would be like awesome. But, um, you know, sometimes those things water down the actual craft. So I would love for them to be able to know how to play. Do you think the, the quote unquote <laughs> celebrity DJ that I feel like Vegas probably started with residencies has a lot to do with that? Well, I think the first and probably one of the best celebrity DJs ever was DJ AM. Mm. And he was a pure DJ. Yes. He was a DJ before celebrity. Yes. Right. But he's the first celebrity, celebrity yeah, DJ. For sure. He's the guy who made me look at what I was charging and go, <laughs> oh, I got to change that. And what's yeah. crazy is like I used to help him back in the days. And then one day it just went crazy. And I was just like, oh, I make good money. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. But I could make that much? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but we saw him be a superstar as a DJ. You know what I'm saying? And that that was everything. So to me, he's the first superstar DJ. Everybody else heard about the money. Yeah. And then they wanted to become that. And, you know, it, again, it, it, it watered down the game. I remember we went to, uh, I think it was M2, a mansion. And we went to see a DJ AM set. Mm -hmm. Me, Biggs. I think Dame was what I had never seen. I think seen. that was a mansion, yeah. I had never seen a DJ do anything like that. Uh -huh. I was not expecting to see that. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know. My bad. Yeah. Like he was the real DJ M was the real deal. Yeah. Real deal. He he's he's one of us. Mm -hmm. Um, I also kind of feel like the rapper DJ, and maybe <clears throat> social media is to thank for this, has kind of came back to some degree though. Like Chase is an incredible DJ and producer. Thank God the world knows him because he has help from Travis. But but, but they're they're was, a team. He was a DJ first. Yep. Became a producer. Mm -hmm. Earned his spot. For sure. I used to manage him. I, I remember. Like, earned his spot. Mm -hmm. Like, his spot. Can't nobody tell him he don't deserve what he got. Because if you go into a party, he kills shit. Every time. And that was the basis of me even working with him in the first place was like, you got to kill shit in a party. Because if you don't, I can't do it. Because I can't mm -hmm. speak for you if you can't kill shit. I right. just feel like a, a, there was a huge gap in time with that. Like, I love that Future and Esco, like the, it's a connection. Mm -hmm. Whereas after I keep bringing up Gina, but like Who Kid was attached to a click, Clue was attached to a click that disappeared. I feel like for like almost fifteen years, and then everyone was just hiring Green Lantern for their tours, <laughs> <laughs> which Green, they should. Green, Green, I want to know what his net he's worth. A, is. He's a, yeah. Green Lantern's a great, team. great. DJ. Oh no, for sure, and great person. What uh, what would be top three beats you heard and said, "Fuck, I wish I would have made that." Uh, Kicking the door. Um. Who Shot You, and The Message. Okay. By Grandmaster Flag. I mean, Grandmaster Malley. <laughs> Every time I hear that record, mm. even when Puff made it over, literally, I get goosebumps. Mm. Uh, it, it's... Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, like a little kid. Mm. Like, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh my God, like, what the fuck was that? And then time goes by and 10 years go by and you hear the record come on again and I'm like, shit, it's still happening. And then Puff makes it over and we on tour and the first night on tour when the shit comes on and it hits the fucking speakers, I'm just like, shit, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the beat. Oh my God. That's What's the artist that when you first heard them or her, you passed on it, but then you went back and was like, I missed that one. No misses? <laughs> If I if I wanted a if I wanted a, a artist like when I was working at record companies mm -hmm. if I heard an artist and they were that I tried to sign them mm -hmm. I tried to sign Nas before anybody mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. like he didn't have a demo he only had one verse out that was live at the barbecue and I was working on a deal with Akinelli mm -hmm. and I was like 
do you know this guy? He was like, of course, that's my man. I bring him. Mm -hmm. He brings him to my office and he didn't have a demo. And I was like, I'm not a vice president. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just an A&R manager. I, mm -hmm. I need a demo. Mm -hmm. I said, dog, we, we just signed Das Effects. They had a whole album. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I couldn't, I couldn't sign Nas because he didn't have a demo. And I wanted to, because I when I heard I went to help with snuffing Jesus, I was like, wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I was literally like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. And then he was 17. I was like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know? You remember the first conversation you had with Nas? Yeah. First thing I said was, dog, yo, sick. Where's the demo? Mm. That's it. It was right in my office. I was like, dog, you wild. Like, where's the demo? And he was like, no, I had no demo. I was like, you don't have no songs? He was like, nah. I was like, fuck. I think that was a thing, though. Like, a lot of people didn't really... Because when you... Back then, if somebody had, like, some equipment, you bust a rhyme, have it on tape. But a lot of people weren't really prepared for the artist side. They just was like, I write rhymes and... I, I, the thing is, I think he was prepared. It just hadn't happened yet because Lars Professor had just dropped his album. Okay. And then he was working on Akinelli's album. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I think he was next. Yeah. I just don't... I, I just was trying to get get the artist before... It took off. Like, I wanted to be... Yeah. Like, I tried to sign Mob Deep before anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that's when Dame was managing him. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Dame started managing him after me trying to sign him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... Mob Deep, dog? Yeah. Really? What was just not connecting in the building at that time? Because you bring in Jay, Nas, Mob Deep. Mob Deep wasn't Mob Deep. They were um, prophets of, um, no, they were poetical, poetical prophets. Was that it's before name? Juvenile Hell? Yeah, it was Juvenile, Juvenile Hell. What, what was their name back then? Was it Poetical Prophets? Something. Po mm. there, it was the name before Mob Deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were nuts. Mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were crazy back then. And I was like, Poetical Prophets, right? Yeah. Political prophets. And um this this girl had managed them and she brought them and I was like, oh wow. And like the next day they met with Bones and Bones was like he could do whatever. Mm. And so it went that way. But like I I tried to sign Missy. I tried to sign <laughs> who else? Uh the locks. I tried to sign Mace. I tried to sign all of these artists like before mm -hmm. these things happen because I'm connected to outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be hearing. Right. Who was the president at the time? <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we kick them out of hip hop? Man. <laughs> How the fuck you hear all that? And it's like, nah, yeah, we're cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. Let me know when you have some something else. What's crazy is when I was trying to get Messi, the locks, Mace, I was vice president. And Jay, I was trying to, mm. like, can we bring Jay over here? Mm -hmm. Like, because I quit my job because, I quit my other job because they wouldn't let me sign Jay. Yeah. Mm. I was just like, it's enough. Yeah. I was like, That's I it. Enough is enough. I, I quit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then um, as soon as I quit, Andre Harrell was like, yo, come be vice president over here. I'm about to start over in Motown. So I'm like, okay, cool, bet. My man Jay's the best. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I was like. We should do this. Yeah. And he didn't see it. But at that time, the ball was rolling with all the other companies saying no. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, we just going to do it ourselves anyway. You think that's what's missing with the majors now? They don't have people like you, like Irv, just like actual music men, but also executives. Um, I think that's been wrong with the music for a long time. Mm. A&Rs don't actually do A&R. A&Rs do, let me check the numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and ryth Rhythm and uh, algorithm. Yeah, that's, that's that's their shit. And you know, they're not developing artists anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, SoundCloud and YouTube and all of those places are developing artists. Yeah. You know? But also like if Clark is 22 in this era, mm -hmm. I don't think it makes sense for Clark to go to a label to be an exec when you can maybe this age maybe maybe I think not. like Maybe not in this time. Like the LVRN kids, them going to go be employees at labels, mm -hmm. they would smoke it, but it, it would do them a disservice because they don't need the major, I think, at, at this point when you have that type of talent and you're that connected to mm -hmm. current music and new artists. I get that. But record labels still got to be record labels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they still turn around and pick all the artists up anyway. So it's Eventually, like, yeah. why would you want to... <laughs> 
I would look at it like if I'm a president of a label, I'm going, it's going to cost me five times more if they break on their own than it's going to be if I find the talent now. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, how about I go find the talent? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like have somebody who's ears to the street, pay him properly, let him bring it, bring it to you, and then let him do the the work inside of a label like an independent. Mm. Like that's the way you do it smartly. You mm. tell that guy, work as an independent. So yeah, find the new producer. Find the this, find the that, find the that. Give me five solid songs that make me say, yeah, we gotta keep going. Mm. Right. How um let me ask what, actually both y'all. Go ahead. This would make it easy. Like, give every A and R for every artist you find. Here's a hundred thousand to try to develop it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you fuck a hundred thousand up on a video. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, let's try to develop an artist that we think is the shit. Every time you might end up wrong, but then that hundreds a, a write off anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I also feel like if you really A and Ring, you should get points. On the album, if if oh, yeah. an executive producer is getting points, right, a real A and R should I feel getting points as well, and I think well, that would give more incentive. Well, the A and R's get points. <laughs> I mean, I mean real if, A and R's, not the one that's uh, submitting the lyrics to Apple. Oh no, 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 he no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the real A and R. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of which, I feel I'll, like I do A and R every day. Oh, I mean, when you live and breathe, yeah, shit, say, everyone yeah, is yeah. I feel like I an actual A&R yeah. in that, yeah. that regard. Mm -hmm. The tastemaker is the A&R. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's also a difference, I feel like, having the ear to know who's talented mm -hmm. and then also having the ear to develop it. I mm -hmm. think there's great people that can spot talent. Yeah. Right. And I think there's great people that can create in the studio. Then there's people sure. like you that I think have both. And right. that's the rare occasion that is definitely missing. Yeah. I like, think like Sycamore is one of those Dupree. people that's like JD. That's Pharrell. Mm -hmm. That's it's 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 a it's a group. Yeah. But uh the verses that's supposed to happen between JD and Puff. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Cause I you know, sitting and talking with JD, I forgot that he has real songs with Big. First of all, JD has a top 10 record every year since he started producing. Yeah. Like fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you sleeping on JD? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying Puff don't have that work. Right. But yeah. But Puff, JD made confessions. Yeah. Puff is a natural promoter. So like Puff is we a, no matter what are always gonna know how great Puff is because Puff yeah. is gonna remind us as he should how great he is. But the other part JD is, is just now starting to talk his shit. I you, feel like you can't front. Puff is and has done a ton of craziness. He's done some extremely culturally relevant oh, absolutely. records, right? Absolutely. So when you do a versus, it's almost like they can't do verses in the United States. Their, mm -hmm. their verses has to be somewhere else where people, when they hear the record, go, oh, mm -hmm. instead of going, Puff Daddy can perform his records better than, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it, I mean- if you go to another country and Confessions comes on, it's going to hit harder than a group of pub mm. joints. Yeah. You know where, what I'm saying? where do you fall in line with the debate that him and JD kind of had on live where JD's like, I actually wrote this and put my fingers on this MPC, on this keyboard. I created this for real. Well, I get that part as a, a producer that is hands on, mm. but there are producers who direct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their producers too, Quincy, Quincy Jones. Jones. <laughs> yeah, he can he play everything? Absolutely, but he directed the room. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. And we'd be liars to say he didn't produce everything that he produced. You For know sure. what I'm saying. Um, but the I always looked at a producer. Someone explained to me when I was young that the producer is the guy who finishes the song. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I heard and I understood it and I see it come through later in life but you know as someone who hits a drum machine i'm just like is this a step mm -hmm. that that could be missed and then i have to go no I, it's not a step that could be missed because there are people who direct the room yeah mm -hmm. there's you know beat makers and producers james Some brown beat makers mm -hmm. are producers james brown mm. yeah there's beat makers and there's a lot of beat makers yeah and then there's the few that are producers and beat makers right who do you think is the best hip-hop producer right now 
right now? Mm-hmm. Hip hop or rap? Well, well, you know what? To me, the best boom bap producer I've ever heard is DJ Premier. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm I'm I don't even know if I'll be able to change my mind about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he created hmm. boom bap to me for real. <laughs> Molly Ma did that. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of like the Rock Kim conversation. Molly Ma did that. Preem, Molly Ma did that. Like Molly Ma did that. <laughs> Ask Preem, he'll tell you Molly Ma did that. Of course, because Preem is a humble, nice no, no, guy. No, no, no. Preem is the best boom bap producer there is because of Molly Ma. Who wins in a versus? Preem. Of course. But Molly Ma, if you have a room full of people who know who Molly Ma and mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. he's done is, mm-hmm. that versus is very even. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying in that regard. <laughs> because he made the bridge. I mean, the entire Juice Crew shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> he of, made, of course, but. He made Eric be for president. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. He made my melody. Like, mm-hmm. Keith's Molly Ma, dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. He like, like make, Molly He Ma. didn't make D'Angelo Brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> he didn't make Devil's Pie. <laughs> well, see, that's different. He, that's totally different. That's different. <laughs> but. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, mm. but, but I still look at Premier and go, he made Nas is like, yeah, yeah. He made, boom. He made a million and one questions. Like mm-hmm. he made kicking the fucking door. Right. Like you asked me about beats. I wish I made, I mm. wish I made kicking the door. Mm-hmm. Who, um, who do you think was the first producer that got us out of boom bap? That like really started that whole transition. <clears throat> Maybe Puff. Okay. Maybe Puff because. Mm. You know, we were all trying to be creative with samples and boom bap. He was just like, lay that sample right out. Yeah. And let's make it so that everybody understands it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I maybe Puff, because he made it like, you know, Puff made things go like this. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. can't be mad at him. He made Puff made us dance. Yeah. He made us dance. Puff made us dance. He made he made it able so that your mother who hated rap could go, I like that. I like that. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the energy and the music right. was. Energy, the music, the feeling. Yeah. He made it undeniable to like beautiful music. hmm For sure. Was that rumor true of Suge, J, J Prince, Master P all coming together to start a, a distribution company? I don't I don't know if it's true or not, but mm. I, I wish it did. I, I I always would throw out there like if you get all of the guys who got that kind of money, the LaFace, the Puff, the Rush, the the Jay, the all of them, they don't need a record company if they build their own distribution company. Mm-hmm. Mm. Absolutely. No, I think. But I also would look at it and be like the reason why it didn't happen is a black man's disease. Somebody like ego. It's too much. Glad I asked that question. Solidarity. None yeah. of it. We don't have that. It's tough. Um, in closing, unfortunately, in closing, um, if you had anything to say to hip hop on its 50th anniversary, what does DJ Clark Kent say to fit to hip hop? Thank you. Thank you. I say thank you to DJ first and then thank you to, to hip hop. Second, because hip hop isn't one thing. It's the way we live. Mm-hmm. It's a culture. And I'm and I'm living and breathing in this living and breathing culture. So I would have to say thank you because it doesn't kick me out. What's some um, favorite hip hop memory that involves you? Favorite hip hop memory that does not involve you? Mm. Favorite hip hop moment that involved me is Grandmaster Flowers let me DJ at Lincoln Terrace Park when I was in 1977. Crazy. So no, 78. He let me DJ in the park with him. And that changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite that happened and I'm not involved. I, that's a great question. Um, because it's so close to me, Reasonable Doubt was released. Mm. What was that day like? Because, of course, it wasn't the big, major, nah, crazy but it, release. Like, the thing is, like, for us, it was just like, 
All right, finally. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I was like, y'all are going to fucking hear now. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought about all the A&Rs that fronted. And I was like, half of y'all going to be without a job soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that happened. And the the world got to hear what I was talking about. And now the Brooklyn Library is plastered with <laughs> all yeah. those lyrics and yeah. memorabilia. Yeah. And that, that's wild, right? It's you insane. insane. Because when I was... You know, running around everywhere saying, by the way, this guy's the best in the world. Like, he's the best you're ever going to hear. And people were like, mm, yeah, I, whatever. He ain't nicer than this. He ain't nicer than that. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, it's going to be crazy when y'all really, really get yeah. to listen. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, I was walking that fine line of confident and conceited when I was telling everybody he's it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm on the confidence side and everybody's going, yeah, you gas up, you, you bugging. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, no, <laughs> I'm right. not. And now it's like, everybody's going, yeah, he's the goat. And I'm just like, I, I, hey, I, I was 94. Tried to talk, yeah, 93. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was 93. I was telling y'all like, and yeah. all y'all just, yeah. You, 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 the crazy part is saying that and knowing that you know that's true. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You was young, yeah. but you know. Absolutely. It was Clark was the reason why you, you was hearing your brothers talk Absolutely. about it. Because I was like, damn, my man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you know. I got to witness uh, the moment of Hove coming off stage at the Barclays during the 444 tour. And you were in the crowd watching. Yeah. I, I thank God, was just happened to be right there and watched y'all, you know, say hi to each other. What was that moment like in the Barclays so many years later? Um, it was, it, it, it was really cool because that's just us. Mm. But, you know, when you look from the outside, people were like, is that the only person he, he jumped off of? He yeah. jumped around <laughs> like that for? And I was like, you, you, you don't understand our connection, one, so it it really wasn't for them. It was just us. Like yeah. he's my man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? He's he's not he's not this rapper that got put off. Right. He's someone I invested my my um my belief in his talent in. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, like Jay Z's first album is not his first album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Tata's first album. It's Beehive's first mm-hmm. album. It's my first album. It's mm-hmm. Ski's first album. Mall's first. It's Mall's first <laughs> album. It's Big's first album. It's yeah. Dame's first yeah. album. It's our album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even talking about producers or anybody else on the album. I'm talking about people yeah. who were with him every day, going, "Okay, mm-hmm. okay, you got it. You got it. You know, like, but." From the beginning, I was like, yo, please, let's yeah. do this, please. Yeah. You know, so that moment it, it was just regular us when we see each other. I think it just caught him off guard that I just happened to be standing right there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know. What was more like as a kid? Well, <laughs> 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 we want to thank Clark. Oh, man, Clark. God damn, dog. <laughs> Clark, we want to thank you, man, for... Uh, taking time out to kick it with us. We appreciate you um, for everything that you've done for the culture, everything you've given. Um, in some way or another, it has affected our lives. Um, and um, it's added to one of the the greatest culture on the planet of hip hop. So we salute you. Thank the you. Legendary, iconic DJ Clark Kent. Thank you. Appreciate the love. Happy birthday, hip hop. Hey. Just, just quickly in closing, why did you leave Benson Hurst and Bay Ridge off Brooklyn's Finest when you were naming on neighbors? Because there wasn't space in the hooks. <laughs> Benson Hurst didn't sound good in there? <laughs> no, it's just, it, if, if you paid attention. <laughs> I probably Bay Ridge. If, 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 if there would have been another verse, I probably would have, yeah, you know, yeah, probably would have got, got to it. it. Yeah, Bay yeah. Ridge, you don't stop. Yeah, yeah. Benson Hurst, yeah, you Plank, won't stop, nigga. Plank Beach. Whoa. <laughs> no, warrior, no.